Hi, it's Chloe from Boxwood Avenue and today I'm so excited because I'm going to be sharing five tips for selecting the perfect backsplash. I want to say a quick thank you to Floor & Decor for sponsoring this video. I'm going to talk a little bit about Floor & Decor in the video. It's one of my favorite places to find backsplash. But first I have to tell you where I am because this isn't my usual kitchen. I am at a client's house today. Uh, we just finished her kitchen remodel. We'll, we'll do a full reveal once everything's buttoned up. We're still waiting on a few cabinet doors. But today I thought it'd be fun to shoot this video here in her kitchen showing you her beautiful backsplash that she selected and tell you a little bit more about all the backsplashes available at Floor & Decor. Selecting the right backsplash is something that I even struggled with when I was designing my kitchen. I almost went with subway tile just because it was easy and safe. But my tip number one is you don't have to go easy and safe. You don't have to go with subway tile. There are so many more options out there. So don't be afraid to deviate from subway tile. My next tip is to not break the bank when it comes to backsplash. With backsplash, there are so many affordable options that to, to me, as I'm sort of calculating budgets out, it really doesn't make sense to invest a large chunk of the budget if we are trying to really balance things out on backsplash because there are so many affordable options. When I went to Floor & Decor before this video just to grab a couple more samples to show you, like this marble, beautiful marble backsplash is like $9 a square foot, which is really pretty affordable for marble. You can sometimes see marble backsplash for upwards of $20 a square foot. Okay, so my next tip is to get creative with the layout of your tile, especially if you are going with a subway tile. You can create such unique designs by just laying out your tile in an interesting way or using a darker color of grout or a lighter color of grout. So there are lots of ways to mix things up and make it feel unique to you. My next tip is to really think about the tile as you're planning the kitchen and don't wait to select your backsplash until the end of the project. Tile is such an important part of the design and since backsplash Backsplash can be chosen at a later time. They're installing it after they've installed the cabinetry. It, I feel sometimes in the design process can kind of get pushed off to the side, but it's so important. So when you are selecting your backsplash, try and select it early on and, and plan your design around that tile moment. My last tip is to really consider scale when you are selecting your backsplash because it's going to set the tone and the mood for the whole room. This goes for a lot of things in design. Design is really about materials and scale, uh, especially light fixtures too. We'll have to talk about that in another video. But if you want something that feels a little bit more modern and unique, I would go with a larger scale because you don't really see that as often and maybe stacking the tile in a unique way. But if you want something, and I tend to gravitate towards this, that's a little bit more traditional. I love using a mosaic or something that has a little bit of a smaller scale. So a mosaic is when they've laid out smaller pieces of tile onto a sheet and then they just put the sheet directly onto the wall. I love a mosaic. I think that they're just so beautiful. Penny tile, hexagon, there's so many different ones. It's probably one of my favorite styles of backsplash. But you can go with a mosaic or something that has a little bit smaller scale and that I think just complements the uh, vastness of the countertop because the countertop is this large scale and then you have the smaller scale tile to sort of complement that. You also have the option of taking the countertop material and then running it up as a backsplash which can be really beautiful as well and we're seeing a lot of kitchens designed that way right now. I have a feeling that my client will be coming home soon so I want to leave her with her home but I'm so grateful to my client for trusting me and really being one of just the sweetest ladies I've ever had the pleasure of working with, and also to Floor & Decor for sponsoring this video. They are incredible. If you have a Floor & Decor in your area, I definitely suggest going and checking it out. Also, if you're a designer watching, you can set up a pro account, which is what I have. It's great because you can get samples for free so that you can take different samples to your clients and show them all of the different options that you're thinking of for their design. And they keep your phone number on file. They may do this for non-pro account members too, but having your phone number on file, they can categorize your clients and they help me definitely stay very organized when I have different jobs going on and different tiles on order. You can also order, I do this all the time, but you can order on the computer and then just have it available for pickup and you can set your contractor or tile person to 
go pick it up so that way it just makes your life so much easier. If this was your first time here, I really hope that you'll subscribe. If you have any other tile questions or any other design questions, I would love if you put them in the comments because it gives me ideas of other videos to make. Thank you so much for watching. I hope that you found these tips helpful. Don't forget, you can always visit me at boxfabnew.com.